Today's video is a before and after on a pair of Florsheim Royal Imperial Plain Toe Bluchers in Pebble Green Calfskin, a pair of black Florsheim Royal Imperials in Shell Cordovan, and a pair of number eight Shell Cordovan Imperials. Hello everybody, it's Robert Powers. Four and a half out of five. Some stains there. Not too bad, huh? My shoe collection. Look how tight that is. I'm not a professional. Old pair of Allen Edmonds torn apart the gloss. And here they are finished up. And here is before on a pair of Florsheim uh, Royal Imperials. Royal Imperial, Imperial was their top of the line. And actually, this is a little more difficult. You can see right there where it does clearly say Royal Imperial. And the model numbers of Florsheim shoes, you go to David's website at vcleat. The letter V is in victorcleat.com. I'm going to try to get it to show here if I can on camera. I don't know if I can get you to actually see the code there that number right there it's not very clear but if you look at this shoe and the other shoe you compare the two it's nine seven six two three uh so the code nine seven means that it is a brown florsheim um florsheim uh imperial or royal imperial the third digit six means that it is a plain toe blucher so the blucher is a derby style shoe open flaps where it has these two small flaps kind of sewn onto the outside okay so that matches that if you notice it's pebble green Right, see that crosshatch kind of pattern, pebble green calf skin leather. Um, another way to help date them is by the, the Florsheim logo. Of course, the original heels are gone, whether or not it has the inset V cleat. So we can't tell anything because the original heel is gone and the original sole is gone. So the, the script logo is gone from the heel. But if you look really closely, I don't know if it shows up kind of in this area up here. I'm going to try to get it to show up. Can you see right there? You can see the script I and the ROI, so you can see it did say Royal Imperial in a script style logo. Um, they changed to a more of a block style logo in, uh, according to David's site, vcleat.com, uh, after 1992 or 93. So uh, if we look at the date code right there, do you see those two letters? It's E, J. So E is May. Okay, the way you look at it, J. So A, letter A would be zero. So B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. So the letter J indicates nine. So I believe this shoe, I'm not positive, I believe this shoe was made uh, before 19, in 1992 or earlier with the last year, last digit of the year is nine. So I think this shoe was made in uh, 1989. Um, that's a, a well-educated guess. I don't know for sure, but anyway, leather's in good condition. Welting is in good condition. They're not bad. They need shoe trees. They need to be cleaned and polished. And I think they're going to look pretty nice. The counter lining and everything. You see that, that green floor shine stitching. You know, looks like it's in pretty good shape. Okay. Sapphire paste wax. This is a number three light brown.
Florsheim Royal Imperials. Finished. There's a little spot there that is barely visible, but uh, that was difficult to polish. I didn't really want to take polish in the little one there. But I think they came out pretty nice. Uh, pebble grain, I think it's called. Um, I've also seen it referred to as cashmere leather, but pebble grain leather, you know, it's got that pattern on it. It's kind of interesting. And I like the brown colors. I like this light brown. I think it's just very attractive. So these have developed what you call a patina. You know, this is an old shoe, okay? This is a very old shoe, a pair of shoes, and they've got some character and some variation in the tone and color. So some people, uh, most people think it's beautiful that are into shoes. Some people, you know, do not like it, but big improvement. And it feels came out okay. Not perfect, but pretty good for an amateur. And here's another pretty interesting pair of shoes. So these, um, I knew immediately when I saw these things, what I was looking at, even before I picked them up. So here, uh, if you see some of the hallmarks, it's well, it's a plain toe, again, blucher. You see the, the way the derby has a small flap uh, sewn onto the outside of the shoe. Plain toe because there's no cap toe. If you look at the, the material here, okay, uh, if you look, see the way the leather rumples but does not wrinkle. See, there are no fine wrinkles in the leather at all, okay? And then also, if you kind of look... Um, like around the eye stays here, the way the leather kind of buckles a little bit, okay? I knew as soon as I saw these, this was a, a, a shell cordovan shoe. Uh, so double oak soles, storm welt, and they are very scuffed, right? And that might even be some, a little bit of light gouging there, uh, but they're not in bad shape overall. Heel counter linings are in pretty good shape, and even though the logo is... Uh, I really can't see any evidence of the logo. It's completely worn off. You can see right there very clearly. Royal Imperial by Florsheim. So Royal Imperial was their top of the line. Um, right there, the piping has a little bit of damage to it. Okay. And the original, original, um, you know, soles and heels are gone. But they're in pretty good overall shape. I'm going to clean these up also. See what they look like. And probably... Put heels on. Uh, no, th no, these don't need heels. The other brown ones needed heels. So, okay, we'll see how these go.
shell cordovans polished up. They're not, they are not perfect, okay? These were, what, uh, you know, a $6 shoe, okay? So um, there is damage. I don't know if you can see there, uh, right there on the piping. But and there's a couple scratches that didn't really come out, but you got to admit, that's not bad for, you know, for the effort that uh, I had to put in. It's basically just mainly cleaning and polishing. Oh, and there's a scuff there I'm going to have to, I missed, I'm going to have to try and get out. Um, it may not come all the way out. Shell cordovan is really, really durable, you know, but it's not impervious to scuffing and scratching. All right, there you go. And here I've got a pair of, this would be considered a plain toe blucher or blucher. I believe it's blucher. And I don't know if you can tell anything special. These things look actually fairly dingy, right? But if you've seen any of my other videos, you notice anything? The way this rumples here? And if you look in there, there are no fine creases at all. And the way the material kind of buckles here over the eye stays, a little bit of damage right there. All right, a little bit of damage. And I don't know if you can see the logo in the light. Try and get it in just the right light. You gotta get it in the reflection to see it. It does say, well, anyway, you can see it better right here. That's even worn away. It is a floor shine Imperial, right? Can you see there? There you can see it says shoe, it says floor shine shoe, and it's got the scripted logo. Okay. The shoes have got a bit of wear on them. But look how amazing the uppers look. Let's see if these can be cleaned up a little bit. Okay. And here are the Forshine Imperials. And by the way, if you didn't catch what I was hinting at, these are made of Shell Cordovan. Uh, I've got a couple of their videos on Shell Cordovan, a link below. Uh, Shell Cordovan is, uh, um, um, I guess I could say rare uh, um, or sought after material. And generally speaking, you take any given shoe and you change it from uh, calfskin leather to shell cordovan, it basically increases the new retail price to the shoe uh, about 250 to $300. Basically with these, what I had to do was I had to take a lot of elbow grease and the sapphire reno mat. I had to strip off, um, you can see here the color, all that purplish color there. That was the uh, old polish that was on the shoe. I even took uh, very carefully on the bottom near the welt, it seemed like either it was black polish or uh, some staining from the sides of the uh, uh, the soles here. And I just very carefully scraped. Uh, it took a long time to get all of that junk off. The shoes obviously are not perfect. You know, there's a scratch there that couldn't really be polished out. Pretty big improvement, huh? Um, so Safir Reno Mat, Reno Mat, stripped that off. Uh, washed them really heavily with saddle soap. Um, I use this leather cleaner, in okay, case shoe magic leather uh, cleaner and conditioner, uh, and then Saphir, Medal Dior, right? This is number nine mahogany, um, and actually uh, use some black. This is the uh, Medal Dior mirror gloss. Sorry about the glare there, and I use that mainly just on the uh, from this point forward. Okay, and like I said, there's the result. Much improved, huh? Oh, I actually had to take sandpaper, I sanded down the edge of the soles and re-dyed them with this. And I know somebody's going to say, hey, you should have, oh, by the way, there's a couple more spots there. Didn't really come out, you know, but much improved. The, the condition of these shoes just was so poor that I couldn't get them to look new. And I know somebody's going to say I should have shown the whole process, but I have limitations with children and family, and this is not my livelihood, you know? And uh, just the length of the editing video process, it just, uh, I apologize, it just wasn't something I was willing to put that much effort in this time, so. But there we go. Florsheim, Imperial, Shell Cordovan, and these shoes were produced uh, somewhere uh, in the late 70s or, uh, yeah, late, I would say the late 70s to 80s.